Hey guys, breaking down some of Guy Mendes' sparring at his academy with another black belt. His opponent's going to sit down and Guy's going to start passing to his right side with a knee cut. He's got a collar grip and a grip on the pants. He's going to use his right leg to push back on his opponent's knee to help him finish that knee cut right here. And now while he's past the guard, his opponent is shelled up in proper alignment and facing his hips towards Guy. So Guy's going to choose to redirect and perform a leg drag to the other side so that he has his opponent's hips turning away from him so he's able to threaten take in the back or disconnect the frames of his opponent and sit to the arm bar to get the submission. If we can be behind our opponent, that's going to be the best place to attack. So here he's getting his opponent to commit with that top right knee, chasing him. And now he's going to use a grip on the pants to punch his arm out and lock out his arm as a frame, activating the opponent's leg as a lever. And he's dropping his left shoulder and chest down onto the hip so that he's shutting down any hip mobility of his opponent. Then Guy is using this grip on the collar and bringing his right elbow and form over top of the knee, doubling up the control while he's still maintaining that grip on the pants. Now there is no way for his opponent to generate meaningful base or mobilize his hips. Guy, only then, once he's got that control pass, will reach his left arm over to grab at the hips or the belt so that he can continue redirecting with his shoulder. And right now he's redirecting the right arm out of the way so it's not a strong frame. Now the arm is floating disconnected from his body and so it's now going to be accessible as a lever so that Guy is going to be able to affect his opponent's structure and start threading for the arm bar. So he's going to take his left arm, he's going to weave it through, getting up at the crook of the elbow and now all he needs to do is start bringing his hips higher up over the shoulder and throwing his left leg over the head to isolate the shoulder and then finishing with extending the arm bar. Now Guy's going to hit a quick jumping triangle. We're just going to look at the trigger point that he sets. So here his opponent gets a grip and starts sitting down right now. His opponent has a grip with his left hand on the right elbow. As soon as his opponent starts dropping his hand to place his hand on the mat, now Guy's going to be able to throw his right leg up and over top of the shoulder, landing into the diamond configuration, setting up into the triangle. He's going to adjust his hip angle so that he can lock the figure four. And he's going to finish his opponent with a shoulder lock similar to a key lock or a maracana, just like we had seen Hoffa do in one of the earlier breakdowns I did of his rolling sessions. His opponent's going to sit and pull guard again, and we're going to see Guy move through the exact same knee cut technique that he was using at the very beginning of the video. So he's going to have a grip on the collar with his right hand and grip the pants with his left so that he can start pushing the knee away beating the shin shield, he's going to switch his hips with a long step variation. Now his opponent right now is in proper base on his elbow facing towards Gi, and so he's able to match the force vectors and use all his weapons against him. So we're going to see Gi once again completely switch to the other side. Redirecting, pinning with the leg drag, and watch how his right leg is activating right now. So he's got the shin into the back of the knee but he's also got the crook of his the instep of his ankle hooked up where it's at the calf so he's able to extend his opponent's leg as far away as possible accessing maximum lever control so that his opponent can't turn his hips back into face key key finishes the pass and now we can see that his opponent's hips are completely pointing the other direction and key is applying force into the hips shutting down immobilization making sure that his opponent can't turn back in and because he's behind his opponent he's got a whole bunch of different attacks he's able to set up. He's going to pull the lapel out on the left side of his opponent with his right hand and feed it through to his left arm that is performing a cross face right now. So the Gi is wrapping underneath his opponent's left shoulder. Gi is getting caught back in the guard right now. So he's going to use this to perform rotational control so he's able to start flattening his opponent out while he's driving his head and shoulder up into the elbow here, pinning the elbow up into the sky, activating a lever, and affecting his opponent's structure so that he's not having to deal with his opponent creating proper frames, while he performs leg work here to start moving into mount. His opponent starts defending any attempt at possibly an arm triangle, if that's what he was looking for. So Gi chooses to start looking to thread through to the baseball bat choke 
with the gi tail. He's over top of the jaw right now, but as gi adjusts his angle and flattens out his opponent, the forearms slide underneath the chin so that the forearms are now forming two sides of the triangle, including the arteries, as the gi is creating the backstop to finish the choke. 